why I believe so strongly in Tamil Nadu. I went to school in Tamil Nadu. I was in the Lawrence School in Lovedale in Uti, or Udagamandalam as it's now called. It was a wonderful school. It was not a private elite school. It was owned by the government. It was very strong military training. Can't say I always enjoyed that. What I learned coming to Tamil Nadu from Mumbai, a school in Mumbai, was the way education is enshrined and worship literally in Tamil Nadu. And the reason they said this was the quality of the human resources here. They just said the engineering skills, the people, and they talked about their visit here and just the, the energy they saw and the education that they saw. The story of your life is not your life, it's your story. Because each of our lives is a collection of our own stories. We collaborated with Ford in the mid-90s to set up Mahindra Ford here in Chennai. Why? That by the time we found the land for the industrial park, all the component suppliers had already found other locations. And there I was with one of our board members telling me, Anand, this is a real white elephant you're creating. Why don't you just donate the land back to the Tamil Nadu government? That was the situation of the, of the kind of attitude that there was to Mahindra World City. So what I'm going to do just simply today is to share with you my experience, my stories, why I believe so strongly in Tamil Nadu. And to be honest, it started with school. I went to school in Tamil Nadu. I was in the Lawrence School in Lovedale in Uti, or Udagamandalam as it's now called. It was a wonderful school. It was not a private elite school. It was owned by the government. It was very strong military training. Can't say I always enjoyed that. But what I learned coming to Tamil Nadu from Mumbai, a school in Mumbai, was the way education is enshrined and worship literally in Tamil Nadu. It became very apparent in school. Achievement, the high achievers, not always the sportsmen, not always the, the speakers, the good speakers. It was always about achievement. It was about learning. It was about academics. And that was my first memory of Tamil Nadu. Let me jump ahead to when, I mean far ahead to when we collaborated with Ford in the mid-90s to set up Mahindra Ford here in Chennai. Why? And I recall vividly that our team was concerned at that time about the famine of investment, industrial investment in Tamil Nadu in the mid-90s. i leave the reasons for that a little vague for the moment, but let us say it was not the prime choice if you just trotted out reasons of infrastructure, power, government support, and so on. And we were looking at states in the north, and it was the Ford team, I have to give them credit, the Americans who didn't know much about India, who came in and said, you know, we really seriously need to look at Tamil Nadu. And the reason they said this was the quality of the human resources here. They just said the engineering skills, the people, and they talked about their visit here and just the, the energy they saw and the education that they saw. And we at Mahindra have always valued that and learned from that. The story of your life is not your life, it's your story. Because each of our lives is a collection of our own stories. And what AI does best is it aggregates these stories and even makes new stories out of them. But it cannot really replace the experience that is first-hand, that makes those stories. We are the writers of our own stories. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I owe you an apology. I've been keeping you waiting. Um, the flight from Mumbai was delayed. And I should blame the traffic on the way here, but I know that you're going to say I'm partly responsible for the automobiles on the road. So. Blaming the traffic is a very hazardous thing for me to do, unfortunately. You know, I'm, as all speakers say, I'm very delighted to be here. I have to be honest, though, that ever since I became a non-executive a few years ago, I've been uh, avoiding a lot of the investor summits to make place for our new leaders, Anish Shah and the president of our group. So. I did initially decline again, and I wasn't going to be attending. And then I ran into an immovable object called TRB Raja. 
never argue with anyone who is over six foot five inch tall. It's never going to work. So that's why I'm here. I owe it to Mr. Raja, but I am delighted to be with you. Now his height is also in a sense symbolic of the towering presence of Tamil Nadu in the Committee of States in India. And I say this from personal experience. My only goal here today in the few short remarks I'm going to make is why I think Tamil Nadu is an outstanding business destination. And like everybody else, before I came here, I looked up chat GPT for some help um, to find out what it would tell me. And to be honest, the answers were, were very useful. It said robust infrastructure, skilled workforce, well-developed industrial zones, ports, power supply, strong educational system, and then the list went on and on. And these are all accurate. They're good reasons. Now, after that five-minute interaction, frankly, I could have found a perfectly acceptable address to give you here, drafted entirely by ChatGPT. But you know, the fact is that what ChatGPT does is it aggregates data. What it doesn't do, and what a human being has experienced and concluded about Tamil Nadu, that's what it doesn't capture. So I have to say, on the subject of AI, I am ultimately a believer not in artificial intelligence, but in human wisdom. And human wisdom that comes from experience. And when you trust your own experience, a very, very different speech emerges. Because as I said, AI is a very superficial collector of data. But life and truth is not just about data. It's about the stories that we experience and that we create. And one of my favorite quotations of all time is from a writer named John Barth, who said, the story of your life is not your life. It's your story. The story of your life is not your life. It's your story. Because each of our lives is a collection of our own stories. And what AI does best is it aggregates these stories and even makes new stories out of them. But it cannot really replace the experience that is firsthand that makes those stories. We are the writers of our own stories. So what I'm going to do just simply today is to share with you my experience, my stories, why I believe so strongly in Tamil Nadu. And to be honest, it started with school. I went to school in Tamil Nadu. I was in the Lawrence School in Lovedale in Uti, or Udagamandalam, as it's now called. And it was a wonderful school. It was not a private elite school. It was owned by the government. It was very strong military training. Can't say I always enjoyed that. But what I learned coming to Tamil Nadu from Mumbai, a school in Mumbai, was the way education is enshrined and worshipped literally in Tamil Nadu. It became very apparent in school. Achievement, the high achievers, not always the sportsmen, not always the, the speakers, the good speakers. It was always about achievement. It was about learning. It was about academics. And that was my first memory of Tamil Nadu. Let me jump ahead to when, I mean far ahead to when we collaborated with Ford in the mid-90s to set up Mahendra Ford here in Chennai. Why? And I recall vividly that our team was concerned at that time about the famine of investment, industrial investment in Tamil Nadu in the mid-90s. I leave the reasons for that a little vague for the moment, but let us say it was not the prime choice. If you just trotted out reasons of infrastructure, power, government support, and so on. And we were looking at states in the north, and it was the Ford team, I have to give them credit, the Americans who didn't know much about India, who came in and said, you know, we really seriously need to look at Tamil Nadu. And the reason they said this was the quality of the human resources here. They just said the engineering skills, the people. 
And they talked about their visit here and just the, the energy they saw and the education that they saw. And we at Mahindra have always valued that and learned from that. And I, as I said, it took, a, it took almost a kind of a foreign team to show us our own country. The next story is when we set up Mahindra Research Valley in Chennai. Again, I must tell you, this was a very personal decision I took. The head of R&D at that time wanted a research valley. He said, we don't have a factory in Chennai. So if we put up a research center, it ought to be near a factory. That's the best synergy you get. And I remember I was in a minority, but I kept talking about the Ford experience. And I said, look, if research is about talent and intelligence and creativity, then we have to go where that is. You do not go by the old shibboleths of being near a factory. You want resources, you go to the face of that talent mine. And we co-located both our tractor and auto R&Ds here. There were, there were teething troubles. People were worrying about why we are so far out, who will move there. Today, that research valley is the pride of our business, of our group, and has, is what has enabled us to turn out blockbuster products. Sitting in front of me is Mr. Velu Swami, who is the head of R&D. Velu is a story in himself. Schooled entirely here in India, in Tamil Nadu. And he has risen to become one of the most respected automobile engineers, not just in Mahindra, but I would say in the world today. Congratulations, Velu. <laughs> and another story, Mahindra World City. I remember, you know, we, we set that up originally as Mahindra Industrial Park to accompany the Ford plant. And again, I'm telling you the honest truth. We were so delayed in finding land that by the time we found the land for the industrial park, all the component suppliers had already found other locations. And there I was with one of our board members telling me, Anand, this is a real white elephant you're creating. Why don't you just donate the land back to the Tamil Nadu government. That was the situation of the, of the kind of attitude that there was to Mahindra World City. So we pivoted, we repositioned it because I still believed very strongly in the power of the human resource here. And I said, if we came here, set up a plant, putting up projects here, then why won't the world beat you know, a path to the doorstep of a special economic zone here. So we renamed it, a little immodestly, I must admit, as Mahindra World City. And we positioned it as a special economic zone. We convinced Narayan Murthy to come in as one of the first tenants. And he came back and I remember telling him, he said, Anand, I know White Elephant. It's, it's visionary and i am be proud to be a tenant here. And after that, there was no looking back. And all of you know what kind of tenants and what kind of people we have at Mahindra World City. But they're all there because of the human resource here. And the last story is, is really about a different kind of resource, not engineering resources, but just in general the resources. All these projects I talked to you about were enabled because of an outstanding bureaucracy here. Whatever political regimes came and went here, the bureaucracy here was simply outstanding. Very supportive, always with you. They were the people who enabled and facilitated and stood with us as we had teething troubles through all our projects. Once again, this is exemplary of the kind of resources here. I don't know whether you know, but Shakti Khan Das was with the government here at that time heading the guidance agency. Today, he's the governor of the Reserve Bank of India, which I'm proud to sit on. And he and I often reminisce about the days here and how we facilitated our coming in. So that's what Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu seems to do. Shaktikant is not Tamilian. He's from Orissa. But 
Tamil Nadu has the ability to take people, provide an environment in which people bring out the best in themselves. So the lesson that I draw from all these stories is that while infrastructure, ports, power supply, and things of that ilk are hygiene factors, and that technological advances like AI are important, it's always, always the quality of the human capital that matters. And that's why I'm not at all gloomy about the prognostications that AI will one day take over from human beings. Technological change is always frightening. I mean, even as far back as the ancient, ancient Greeks, Socrates disapproved of the idea of writing because he believed it would affect the human being's capacity to memorize. And yet, writing turned out to be one of the most seminal developments in human history. It enabled the capture of ideas, the spread of knowledge, and the freedom of expression. It was not writing itself, though, that created this impact. At a certain stage, everybody could write. Writing changed the world because it became a tool for exceptional people to create literature, philosophy, knowledge. In short, human capital added value to the technology of writing and used it to enrich its master. So AI will become the companion to the creative process not its master. And to end, well, finally, the quality of human capital in Tamil Nadu is outstanding. Singularity, that state, if it ever comes, will probably come last to Tamil Nadu because of the strength of the human intelligence that you nurture. And that quality is your Brahmastra. But you know the Brahmastra is meant to be a weapon that has the power of devastation. But on the other hand, the Tamil Nadu Brahmastra is a weapon is a weapon of empowerment. It's going to ensure that the power of human capital pushes new frontiers and makes the world a better place. Thank you for your patience, and I now look forward to my fireside chat with Hormuz Surabji. <laughs>